I've had most of the stuff crammed in here, <sighs> especially from this whole build. So it's uh, it's quite the show. Why isn't this working? I don't know why the pad's not working. No. Anyhow, you get the gist. So I gotta move all these um, uh, toolbox and all these cabinets and everything, get them all cleaned out, and then try to get the, uh, the pie, just everything. This is just, again, it's um, really a, a show since I've been stashing everything in here for the last couple of, uh, well, for the last year anyhow. So, anyhow, we'll start, uh, moving this process and see how it shapes up and we'll design the uh, the new workbenches around all this stuff. All right, so we're gonna start the bench. I'm gonna measure it, well, measure, yeah. All these things are gonna be 38 uh, and a half tall, three quarters, puts it at um, 39 and a quarter, which is what the top of the, the bench is. That way, if I ever move this around, it's all gonna be the same level, just be looking nice, have the same uniform surface. Then I'm gonna cut all these down. These are my leftover ones. And I went and got uh, a load. <sighs> For the yeah, it's gonna be. It's not a cheap, uh, not a cheap workbench. Lumber prices are still up. Um, but anyhow, got that. I got some some pretty decent plywood, and we'll we'll make this happen. So I'm just gonna put on time lapse and walk you through it. All right. So like I was saying, this is the leftover material I had from the mezzanine post because um, I used eight footers up there and just cut them in half. So I had a little bit left over. Uh, I'd say I saved money, but they were probably more expensive back then than they are today. Um, so anyhow, uh, just kind of mocking them up in place. The only thing I really knew was my outside dimensions at this point. So that back, uh, that back beam or that back post is 10 feet, and then it came out about uh, 60 or maybe 68 inches towards the workbenches to make that nice L shape. So just kind of mocking up the... Um, the post, I had a general idea where they needed to be, and I knew I didn't want anything in that corner to obstruct, um, you know, uh, toolboxes and stuff being shoved back there in that corner. Um, you know, I, I didn't want to encounter, like, the lazy Susan issue. I, I wanted to be able to make sure I got stuff in and out of those corners, and I didn't waste that space. So, again, I had my son help me, which was uh, a good exercise for him to use the level, good exercise and patience for me, <laughs> you know, working with a 10-year-old. Um, but anyhow, we, we got the frame uh, plumbed up and leveled up. And this was a little more of a challenge because typically you would just screw the back, you know, the back plates up against the wall. And it would be a fixture uh, in the garage. Uh, but this one, I still wasn't sure that I, I, I kind of had planned on using casters underneath it. That way I could roll it around if I wanted to. Um, when it was all said and done, I just decided not, you know, not to do that. I guess I still could, but... Um, not really something I'm I'm interested in at this point. I could, with two people, we could unload it and get it moved off the wall. But again, I didn't want it to be permanent in case I ever changed, you know, uh, my mind on how the design was or the garage design was. I didn't want it to be stuck there, um, you know, screwed into the wall, and and then also not have um, its own supports so that it could be freestanding. So anyhow, rambling. Um, Trying to figure out at this point, you know, where exactly we wanted all the posts to be and uh, and building the outside structure. Um, I would just say when you're at this stage of the game, you want to think about the types of tools, the toolboxes you have, the saws, whatever, and think of those dimensions uh, to make sure that you're not going to build something that's, you know, just too big or just too small or it creates a waste of space or where it, it creates the... Uh, um, the challenge of not being able to put what you want in there. So I had an idea which toolboxes I was using um, for both width and then eventually for the height of, of the second shelf. Okay, so um, <laughs> it was a little harder to keep square than I thought it would be. Uh, the last time I did one of these, it was just bolted against the wall. So you just, you know, as long as you get the back back plate level, everything else, you can level up to it. Anyhow. Uh, how to make sure and cross track a couple times, make sure I had it square and that it wasn't racked. But um, I think my plan is to cut this, I think I'm gonna cut this one out and then use that to slide, um, you know, a couple tools under. Like I got this this mobile box that I use for, uh, uh, for woodworking and stuff, um, framing. I think I'll slide that under there with maybe my floor jack 
so I have something I can tuck it away underneath. And then under here, uh, I think I'm going to do a second uh, shelf in the middle. And I wanted a nice big corner area to be able to, to shove stuff in. I originally was going to um, frame this across uh, and make, you know, like a little triangle here. I could kind of set my stool up against. I, know, I, I, I guess I, I still could. I've got enough plywood to do it. Um, I just feel like that might be a far reach back to that corner. Um, and I'm going to be putting the pegboard up here. So I'm going to think about this for a second. Um, but I do think I'm going to frame this, this back one. I didn't put a post back there. I might have to. I don't know. I can't imagine a ton of weight being on it. Um, now, let me think about it here. Uh, there really wasn't much to think about. Uh, I just go ahead and cut the... Uh, the, the piece is uh, two foot wide um, by eight feet and just make sure your braces are in the exact spot you want the wood to break that was the most important part um, and I sanded off the front uh, just to keep splinters and all that kind of stuff down and just notched out the uh, the spots for each of the um, the vertical post um, hindsight I would have probably done the bottom before I did the top because it made it for a, a fun game of Tetris to try to squeeze it in there um, but this is a very solid surface. The three-quarter plywood can hold a, a, an absolute ton of weight. <clears throat> so, this is just three-quarter inch plywood. Um, it's not even the sanded kind. The sanded plywood they had was uh, like $85 a sheet. This was just a good grade of three-quarter, and it's actually a really nice finish on top. I hit it with that, with that sander real lightly, but... Um, it was also $30 cheaper aboard. So I just went with this one. Um, I was still contemplating on whether or not I would um, you know, use a butcher block on top, but I, I don't know. I think I'm gonna reinforce uh, right underneath here with a uh, two by 12 across and then another stud, um, you know, another stud running this way. That way I can put a vise in this corner. Uh, I changed my mind. I'm, gonna, um, I'm actually gonna cut this bay for that box so it has a nice home right there um, and I'm gonna leave that as a big shelf and I'm gonna put the small shelves over here uh, maybe I'll put a actually I think I'm gonna put a small shelf maybe a drawer uh, on the front of that so anyhow on the on the fronts of this uh, I saw this somebody else do this instead of having a bunch of screw holes that will just catch dust and dirt and grime or whatever I want it to, uh, to look clean up top so I'm gonna use these um, little L brackets underneath. So I'll just fasten the L bracket. Um, I'll clamp this down and put L brackets, you know, every every foot or two, and just use three quarter inch screws and uh, and cinch it down. Um, also, if I ever want to replace the top, then I can just take it off real easy. I guess you could do that too with deck screws. But um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this uh, squared up with this top uh, sheet of plywood. I can see is perhaps a little out uh, uh, racked, just a hair. Um, and I just, I don't know, that'll, that'll firm this thing up. It'll keep it from shifting. And then I'll uh, start on the, the, the next uh, row of shelves there. In hindsight, I don't know if I'd do it this way again. It's just as easy just to take deck screws and drive down through the top. But I, again, I thought it looked like a nice clean install. So uh, the key was just to keep the L brackets uh, held down about an eighth of an inch. That way it forces the plywood uh, to cinch down against the studs in case there's any variations. Um, but it, it's really just a simple process. I put them about every 16 inches or so. Um, anywhere I thought there could be some like natural tendencies for the wood to buckle up. I forgot to turn my camera on. You would have gotten a kick out of me playing Tetris with this middle um, this middle shelf, man, they were hard to get in there. I actually had to take the ends off um, in order to kind of slide it through and then work it up in there. Um, but anyhow, I decided to just make it easy and I put the, the two by on the inside. Um, that way, one, I guess you can just grab stuff off the bottom one easier, but it also allows some room for my knees. So if I'm sitting here working on something, my knees won't be bonking or my shins won't be bonking up against it. So. I'm going to throw some screws in here, get it all tightened up. I'm going to cut this piece there so that that box will fit in there. And then uh, I wasn't going to, but I, I got extra paint. So I'm going to uh, just throw a drop cloth on here, uh, prime, all the, prime all the post, and I'll use the same color that I got up there. I got a bunch of that leftover um, lacquer, not lacquer, but um, 
enamel. So uh, it should clean up nice, and then it'll, I don't know, it'll look, it'll look nicer than wood. So check it out here in a minute. So I just used my leftover Kills primer on this thing, and uh, used a little bit of painter's tape just to keep it off the front face of the, uh, the plywood. It just started to look somewhat clean. Uh, anyhow, this was, um, again, the leftover enamel I had for the rails. Um, where is this from? From Sherman Williams. So uh, it's expensive paint. There's no sense in it just dying in a, in a can over the next five or six years while it's sitting back here. So if you're going to put it to use, and uh, actually I'm really glad I did. It, lo it looks a whole lot better than just having it plain wood. Um, and I used that little four-inch roller and made pretty quick work of it. The finish isn't the best. It's kind of rough, but... Um, again, I was just looking for, for speed here. I wanted this to be done um, so that the next day it could be dry enough to start stacking uh, all the crap I had piled up from the other garage. Um, I, one thing I learned is make sure you do the bottom and don't paint near your head first. I, I must have had four or five stripes of paint across my face when I was trying to reach in the very back of it. Um, I guess the drop cloths weren't necessary, but you know, being as I just sealed the floor, um, I was kind of being careful. I didn't want to have to deal with a bunch of cleanup anyhow. So yeah, man, this thing's looking uh, looking good. Leftover paint didn't cost me anything. Um, I will. Uh, I think I'll come back tomorrow and just put poly on the top. Maybe a couple coats, I guess. I'll see what I've got left over. But uh, yeah, try to seal it just to protect it from um, from stains and oils and whatever. Be something easy to to sand and touch up if I want. So, uh, so yeah, man, I'll take a, take another, uh, video once I get this pushed in, poly on it, and, uh, get the rest of the, uh, the pegboard and cabinets up. We have a workbench. <laughs> Took all weekend, but got it painted. Used my leftover ballistics from the floor, uh, on the worktop surface. Oh, man. Um, actually a lot of work in this thing. I originally wanted to put it on casters. And I just decided that it might move around too much and it was just gonna be a lot of work. I decided not to. I thought it'd be cool to be able to spin this thing around and make it a bar if I ever had a big party down here. But uh, anyhow, I got the wall control up. I ordered a box of you know cheap pegboard from Amazon. So I'll add that uh, in the next couple of days. I got two of my Husky cabinets uh, up. Actually, they were all, well, these, I didn't realize these were damaged until I got them. This one's got a bend in it. Um, and the other two had been hit with the forklift, so they got sent back. I uh, got most of my tools moved from the other garage down here, and I'm just starting to move all my woodworking stuff down. So, uh, yeah, I got a pile of crap up in the other, other garage. I got to move down here, but it's starting to, starting to take shape, and uh, I'll probably fill this space up faster than, I, faster than I really think, but excited to get the rest of the stuff moved in and uh, get the bikes down here and everything else. But it is, uh, it is coming along. So it was a busy week and busy weekend, uh, continuously doing the cleaning and moving everything from our basement and the other garage uh, down here. I'm starting to get things tucked away where they need to go. I'm hoping the inspector doesn't lose his mind at me. Um, for, I still don't have my final, but I have to wait till the stone gets put on the front. So anyhow, um, a lot of stuff, junk moved in here, got the side-by-side, -side, got the bike, um, and most of my tools and, and boxes and everything uh, that have been staged upstairs on the other level. So, um, you know, back to the bench. Um, I originally wanted to put this box under here. I just kept going back and forth. The only things I really did purposely and, and I'm, I'm happy with are um, the height of my shelves because I knew I wanted to have uh, those ports organizers in there and just some small toolboxes uh, along the other side underneath, just stuff that's going to be tucked away. I'm not going to have to use that often. Um, I bought these bins sort of on impulse because uh, I wanted to get rid of some of the milk crate uh, storage that I had. Uh, they see these are DeWalt. They, they're actually kind of, they're nice. Um, they're heavy duty. They don't, um, uh, they, they lock on top of each other. I actually thought that those organizers there locked on the top, um, but they don't, they're too, they're too short. So evidently they must make one that does lock on top. It's just not the ones that I have here. Uh, 
So anyhow, um, like I mentioned before, I use that ballistics on here, and uh, I mean, check this out. It's it's uh, it's very water repellent. I don't know if you can see that or not. Actually, that's nearly impossible to see. But yeah, I mean, it doesn't um, doesn't absorb any water, so it should be relatively chemical resistant. Um, and. Uh, Might need to sand it. It's a little rough. I, I do want to sand it out. Anyhow, this is again the wall control uh, pegboard. The the cheap Amazon stuff that I got. Eh, it's it's cheap Amazon stuff. Um, it comes with little plastic tabs you can lock on there so that they uh, they don't fall out every time you use them. But um, I did get some a little bit better. Like these are like plastic dipped ones for some of the bigger items. Um, but again, it's it's a pretty pretty good use of organization. If you guys are ever interested, this I think it's called Speed Fabrication. They're on uh, Etsy. Uh, they make a pretty good product. Um, I've got two of them. I've got this one over here uh, with my other drills. It's a little bit. It's got the shelf on top. It's actually got a, um, a surge protector on top, so you can have your chargers up there. But I just made a again out of scraps. Um, made a little charging station. Starting to get the uh, the cabinets up, and of course I got the other set finally uh, installed as well. And um, I don't my I don't really have OCD, but for for you OCD folks, you'd probably tell me to move this drawer, this uh, this chest over a little bit so it lines up with the cabinets. I got to figure out what I'm going to do with this uh, this pump for now. So I'm pretty excited where we're at right now with the garage build. Uh, still a little bit of organization left to do. Um, you know, if the kids get bikes again, we'll probably have to move those down here, but you can park both vehicles in here. Um, the temperature has been great. It's 75 degrees. The AC is hardly ever running, uh, between the fans. Um, I mean, it's, it stays nice and cool and I've been able to move in a lot of my stuff up top. Uh, still got some wires strung across because I was troubleshooting a subwoofer yesterday, but Really thrilled with the garage, and uh, I'm excited to talk about the final chapter, which will really be the exterior and the stone and, uh, and the pavement, and I'll do a, a final walkthrough on this bad boy. So thanks again for watching.